I'm sorry, Bandit. Guy who's got the same name as the video game title. Very unoriginal, but that's understandable. You didn't quite make it. They, they took your game down, actually. You don't exist. Meet your maker. What is Showdown Bandit? Showdown Bandit is a game made by Kindly Beast. They also made the Bendy game. You know, but, but under a different company. A top-down horror, which was very different compared to their successor, Bendy and the Ink Machine. However, did the game live up to the hype and gain the same success Bendy did? Did the game give the same excitement as each chapter did for Bendy and the Ink Machine? Not really. I should say this now before I ask the question. I will not be comparing this game with Bendy and the Ink Machine. They are both two completely different games by the same developers. I'm reviewing this as its own game, so let's just quickly throw Bendy out the window before we say, unlike Bendy. Originally, I did not want to review this game because I just didn't like it all that much. When I tried recording footage for the video, um, I gave up. I was so bored. I was brain dead. Uh, I went and streamed it. I got mad. I did not like this game that much. It was honestly quite boring. Uh, the movement was in embarrassing and overall it just wasn't a good experience for me i just disliked it heavily now why on earth am i reviewing this game i already didn't like it maybe i just wanted to give it a second chance maybe someone told me something about the game that made me interested in possibly reviewing it no a true mono a mono tech Yeah, Kylie Beast doesn't quite exist anymore, so I thought, hey, I'm gonna review their only game that they made, let alone their only episode. Let's start this game off. Hello there. This game starts with you being found by this lady puppet in a coffin and tells you, hey, you there, get out of the box. The show must go on. You meet the main character, Bandit. No, I'm not joking. Your main character's name is in the title of the game. In fact, they even said, oh, look, it's the Showdown Bandit. Well, if it isn't the Wandering Showdown Bandit. You are the title of the game. Bandit gets his hands strung up by a few strings and... Yeah, we make horror games, right? Yeah, just uh, push that little signature button there. You know, the one that makes the game scary. Okay. Now, how do you control Bandit and Showdown Bandit? Do you use WASD like most movements are for video games? No, we are rather going old school with a point and click mechanism. This means we can just ditch the keyboard. The movement of Bandit is so god-awful slow, he makes a snail look fucking fast. That is an embarrassment as you enter the next room. You're presented with random cash laid on the ground. What's it for? Upon looking this up, it only does one thing. It gives you access to a secret room. You'll find it later. As you walk a bit more, you come in contact with another Bandit who has a gun. Grab the cork shot weapon and you will have your line of defense on hand. Except here's the problem with that line of defense. You can only use your line of defense in this circle here to trigger a third person mode that allows you to shoot with the left click and to exit with the right click. The game will throw a few cheap scares here and there, which is expected from a horror game in this day of age. A few rooms later, you will come in contact with your first enemy of the game. How do you defend yourself from the enemies without that cork gun circle? Just walk away. Yeah. You can only really walk away from the enemies. You run like a little bitch! 
get to the next room and you'll be greeted by the banker. Banker is how you save your progress in the game. The game does not have an autosave feature. Let me say that again. In the year of 2019, when this game came out, there was no autosave feature. And in order to save your progress, you need this banker to do it. Does it add a challenge? Absolutely. I found myself not remembering to save my progress and having to backtrack by 35 minutes of gameplay. And to be fair, most of that gameplay was just walking. Why didn't I remember to save, though? I'm so used to auto-saving. I haven't had to manually save a game since 2012. Good lord. We enter the next room to immediately find a key to the door next to the banker. Now, on one side, I'd say... This is a useless waste of time. It's a key to a door we just fucking saw. However, I can also say it's a great introduction to the concept of unlocking doors in this game if you have never unlocked a door in a video game. It tells you this is what's going to happen in the game, which I can appreciate in a way. In another hidden room, you walk into another cheap scare and a question mark paper. That paper will tell you some kind of lore happening in the puppet world. But that's all that's going on with these papers. You're better off ignoring these papers for a reason I will state later in this video. We enter the crossroads section of the game. At this point, they are now just throwing you into the wild. Time for you to figure out what to do without the help of a tutorial. We enter the room to a cork gun circle, a locked door, a blocked door, an unblocked door, and a purple door with stars on it. In the purple door is Bandit's dressing room, which means you can customize Bandit. To progress the game, however, go through the left door to activate the lever that will put the spotlight on the cork gun circle so you can use it. Shoot the bell to gain access to the right door. After we go through that part, we enter the wilds. The game will tell you from this point, enemies will be crawling around almost each room you enter and to stay on guard. I guess this gives a great chance to share hit points in this game. You have five hit points. Run out and it's game over from there. You are given a chance to repair your strings, which will be found in the room with the banker in the wilds. His name is Doc Carver. He will repair your strings free of charge and is the only way you can regain your strings back. Enter in the room ahead of the banker and Doc station. You will get a creepy song sung by a girl. If I have to give credit where credit is due with this game, the atmosphere in this game is wonderful. The eerie music in the background, the creepy girl singing, the enemies on first glance. This game can set a mood of creepy, which is exactly what I like to see in a horror game. This is something done right with this game. After pulling the lever upstairs and shooting the bell with the cork gun downstairs, you will gain access to a key. Where does that key go to, you may ask? Well, it's the crossroads door, of course. You will also encounter the faceless bandit for the first time on your way back to the crossroads area. If he gets you, that's an insta-kill. But he is faceless, so he can't really track you down specifically unless you get in his clear way. Enter the formerly locked door and hit the bell to access the happy mine. Who the fuck put TNT there? In order to experience the mines, you need to solve this puzzle with numbers on a door. It's always randomized, so speed running with the same code will not help you. Save your progress with the banker here and enter the left door. Now here's why you need to save your progress here. And here is why the speed of bandit should be so much faster. However, if you are able to get around the corner of the first circle before the giant baby crawling thingy, you will be perfectly fine. It is very fast, so react the second you hear that thing moving. As you bypass the two sections with giant baby crawly thing E, you'll find two doors. One has Doc and the Banker to save and repair if need be. There is a door, but I assume you need the cash collectible to open it. No prompt on how much you need. I guess it's just saying you need enough. Hey, hey, can I get a, can I get in the club, please? 
Nah, I can't let you in. It's, it's, it's gonna cost you to get in. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, of course. Um, yeah, um, what will 20 do? Yeah, that's not gonna be enough. Well, well, then how much is it gonna be? Enough? How much is enough? Okay, I'm just... <laughs> Alright, come back when you have more money. Can I get my 20 back? It's not 350. I know that much for sure. The next room is where you need to be to progress the game. Here you need to ninja your way around these two enemies, but there is a high chance you will take a hit here. Enter the room to see a little cutscene. It's that creepy singer girl, and she's basically saying, Hey, look at me, I got no eyes. And Ben is like, Whoa! Except not really. He just sits there, watches, twiddles his thumbs. Walk up to the paper and it will tell you the number doors to enter to progress the next part of the game. So now you have to walk all the way back and enter the doors in the order need be. I would highly recommend taking a picture of that on your phone so you don't have to walk back because, you know. Ready? Go! Struggle your way back to the part you need to be and enter the room where you need to do the sequence. Enter the sequence correctly and you'll get to the next part of the game. Here you will learn about traps. You'll gain access to them in the next room in which you will place them down for your enemies to run into and they will destroy themselves. This is your defense without the court gun circle. Kind of late to introduce that, don't you think? In the following room, you will get a different gun and the ability to ride the minecart. This is one of the more exciting parts of the game. Endlessly shoot targets, but you will have to shoot the doors down before crashing because that'll kill you. And then you'll have to do the sequence door again. And we know about the walking in this game. All you need to really hit is those doors, but the targets, you can just shoot them for extra fun. Uh, maybe they unlock something? I don't Finish the ride by losing the rocket launcher and saving the game. After you see Doc, you walk up to a house for... Is that the Undertaker? And he's got a final pick. Tonight, you will go one-on-one -on -one yeah. with the Undertaker. <laughs> oh, wait. Wrong Undertaker. That This is Mrs. Undertaker. She isn't nearly as exciting. She will give you the right to enter Dead Man's Gulch and retrieve a skeleton key for her. She also says, hey, don't get more keys, stupid. It's not your shit. After going through the graveyard, we collect the first key and pull a lever to activate the cork gun circle for the area. We will run into Faceless Bandit a few more times. Do your best to avoid him and you'll be good. Go to the left door in the safe area. Well, I thought this was safe. Go to the left door in what I thought was the safe area and get the second key. You'll have to encounter these little spider things, and they're incredibly annoying because they just don't stop. Once you collect the second key, head your way back to the what was thought to be the safe area and go to the upper door to progress. You'll enter the forbidden door and run into a keep out door with a poster of King Boo Boo who looks quite similar to someone. Can't put my finger on it. Go to the spotlight in the center of the room for whatever the fuck all of this is. And oh, look, Master Hand. At the end, you will see Tune In Next Time. However. At this point, I'm supposed to say, hey, go check this game out. Go play it if this creepy slow game catches your interest. But you can't. There is no such thing as a Tune In Next Time. The day that Bendy was announced to be all five chapters at once, Kindly Beast disappeared. The Twitter accounts for Showdown Bandit and Kindly Beast went dark and private. The website is just a black void and Showdown Bandit on Steam is... gone. You can't buy or download it legally anywhere. It's pretty much all gone. The merch? The game? 
All social media has been erased, leaving the future for this game abandoned only after the first chapter. There was even supposed to be bonus content that was going to come out shortly after chapter 1, but that never saw the light of day. If you got the chance to play this game before it disappeared, consider yourself lucky. However, if you missed it, you missed it. This is why I'm reviewing this game. The game and company went away silently. There was no announcement or anything showing the game was discontinued or put on hold. At this point, we can assume it's gone for good. But maybe someday we could see Showdown Bandit return. Did I enjoy the game? Hell fucking no. The story was kind of there. The atmosphere was there. It had potential. But it flopped really fucking hard. Again, I didn't enjoy the game. But if you enjoyed what was Showdown Bandit, and if you could find a way to get your hands on it, or if it reappears someday at the same state as we just witnessed, try it at your own risk. It's a long process due to your movements being as fast as a square wheel. It's infuriating when you have to go somewhere else, but point and click said otherwise. If it wasn't obvious, and this game were to get all five chapters, considering how the game plays, I could not see this game entering the console market. I can understand a way of doing point and click by moving your by moving the cruiser and selecting an area, but at that point you might as well just use the control stick to control your character. It defeats the purpose. Point and click was a very questionable decision, and I'm not sure if I'm fully on board with the idea of point and click. WASD would have been a better approach with this game and there could have been so much potential for this game. I want to say thank you guys so much for tuning in to my review of Showdown Bandit. This was kind of fun to make, actually. It's probably my first review where I wasn't really on the side of the game. My previous horror reviews, I pretty much said, hey, this game's pretty good, but for the first time, this game just wasn't all that good. Like I mentioned, if you want to try it out and you can find some way to try it out, I'm warning you. Thank you for watching. Hey everybody, before today's video ends, uh, I wanted to show you what's on the CD. So it was sent to me a week ago, and basically what I was told it is it has the ending to Showdown Bandit. Uh, I just want to put a disclaimer. Uh, it's not going to look very complete. Uh, it looks like there was a, it was a real life thing. They used the plushies from what I heard. Um, but yeah, we're going to watch this together. So uh, let's get looking at it. Well, it's good to know they had an idea on what they were doing with it. Killing it off by a monster. Anyways, I think it's Crash Bandicoot time.